What is going on, Cheddar Gang? Welcome back to another video and welcome to the new temporary sets. It is a work in progress. As you may or may not have guessed by the title of the video, we're going to be going over the portfolio updates. Now, this specific actively managed portfolio with only about six and a half or seven thousand dollars, like I said, was created on the side from some longer investments. Now, these returns, of course, in a large part are due to the fact that we are in such a bullish market. But in addition, I feel that because I've been able to actively manage the portfolio, trim positions when necessary and stay on top of trades, I am able to get significantly better returns from the market while also reducing my exposure. The opportunity that we have in the market right now now is a once in a decade perhaps once in 20 year opportunity where you have a bubble that is potentially forming and forming and with more and more money inflows in the market and the bubble increasing you have these really exponential runs specifically with some more speculative plays and so by actively managing a portfolio doing your research finding which speculative plays should run which industries are the best to expose yourself to you are going to have an opportunity to create a lot of wealth for yourself if you are going about things correctly now again obviously i need to preface everything in this video it's not financial advice and i'm not a financial advisor it's simply a blog and i want to share my journey with you guys about how i've been able to grow this portfolio from I, like I said, roughly between six and a half to seven thousand to now fifty two k in this four month span. Now I've had positions, for example, that have run up more than a thousand percent some options plays for example even some stocks that have run up like 700 percent but it's not like i've had one position that has yielded this entire return on the portfolio with the blabber jabber out of the way let's look at what exactly is happening in the market and i want to bring your attention to something called m2 now m2 is going to be a calculation of the money supply that includes all elements of m1 as well as near money so really all that means is m2 includes current cash and checking deposits as well well as savings, money market securities, mutual funds, and other deposits. In essence, M2 is closely watched as an indicator of money supply and future inflation and as a target of central bank monetary policy. Now, this is something that I wanted to bring your attention to here. This is a comparison of what the M2, the money inflow chart currently looks like in comparison to the S&P 500. Now over here in March, this is what we have. This was the COVID crash, if you wanna call it that. I mean, it's the fastest recovery for a crash in history. I think it was like a six month recovery. This is what a crash is. You have the dot-com bubble from June 2000, which didn't recover to its peak until August in 07. It took seven years for this to recover before boom, crashing yet again. So really, the actual recovery from this crash in 2000, July 2000, you would not have fully recovered until, let's say, over here, March 2013. That's when the market really started to take off from this position over here in July 2000. But let's look at the market right now. Are you really telling me that you want to be putting money into blue chip stocks, ETFs, and dividend stocks as a long-term investment when the market is this high? Now, just comparing this to the M2 charts, again, the M2 is the money inflows, how much money there is circulating, and this could be compared to how much money there is, for example, in the stock market. Now, just to show you guys over here, if you see this little tiny increase between October 08 and January 2009 in this three month span, this was what I would call a big increase in the money inflows back in the financial crisis of 08. Now the money inflows started to generate during the crash. And the same thing could be said about 2000 when the crash was starting to happen, there was actually an increase in money inflows. Well, what you're seeing now is something that's never happened in history before. Look at this green line here. This is the money inflows. Look at how parabolic this move was when the crash here happened back in March. Money inflows like you've never seen before, and that is keeping the market up. The amount of money that there is circulating in the market, the amount of stimulus that we are getting combined with this perfect storm of a work from home environment. More people have access to things like FinTwit on Twitter or YouTube. More people are aware of the fact that there's money to be made in the, the markets. And that is propping up this massive parabolic recovery 
in the market, which is potentially formulating a bigger and bigger bubble. And in order to take advantage of the bubble and what happens in a bubble, you want to be actively managing your portfolio. Again, by actively managing your portfolio, especially if you know what you're doing in the markets, you are able to get a much better return on investment and also hedge against a potential correction or crash because you are in and out of cash more. And you are also potentially hedging against market movements with things like volatility and and inverse ETFs that are going to protect some of those long trades or long positions. Now, of course, there are other ways to hedge against the potential crash and inflation in general. Historically, that is gold. A lot of people are saying that's crypto now. I don't know how much I believe in crypto as a hedge, considering that the last time the market crashed, crypto crashed with it. Really, in my opinion, the best way to hedge against the current market conditions going against you and correcting is by actively managing your portfolio and being in and out of positions as actively as possible, trimming profits, and then putting cash to the side. With that being said, let's take a look at some of the current positions that I do have. First, we'll take a look at the one month trend on the portfolio sitting right about at 52K. It's showing 49.9K from yesterday. That is 52K as of today, February 17th. So this isn't uh, fully reflective. Uh, but we should be sitting at about plus 11K over the last 30 day rolling period. And that is going to be close to maybe 20 plus 25% or so over the last 30 days. Ignore this anomaly over here. One day I woke up and it was showing that my Domino's pizza call options were up 1500% when in reality they were actually down 80%. So this anomaly, this absolute huge blip here was because of the fact that my Domino's calls were showing that I was up like 15 grand when really they were down like five, 600 bucks. So that was a 15,000 swing that the interface was showing incorrectly. And he was ignoring the anomaly here. You could see that the portfolio has steadily been sort of increasing. And again, it is because it's actively managed. I'm in and out of positions and I'm constantly trimming profits on some of those big winners. Really quickly, last thing I wanna show you about the overall broader market movements as well. We had the 10% uh, the correction here and then the 8% correction. These happened in September and October just before the election. Now, ever since then, November 1st, we've been in this very nice predictable channel on the S&P 500. Now, this is something that we go over every single week with our members on the Patreon call. We go over the overall market movements and then what trades I'm looking at for the week. But just wanted to share my thoughts with you guys really quick. Obviously, the market is trading extremely heavy right now the S&P is testing that 4,000 point territory and I think it's going to be a pretty significant level of resistance now just a couple scenarios that I could now just a couple scenarios that I could draw out here if the market does end up continuing these trends these ebbs and flows then potentially because we're trading so heavy right now the market could end up kind of coming down here like something like this and then eventually reversing to those 4,000 highs on the s p and really it looks like maybe the first or second week of march maybe even like somewhere around here that would yeah be first or second week of march when the s p flirts with 4,000. Now on the bull case or bull side of things, we have been kind of consolidating along the top of this channel. So if that consolidation continues and we see some flatter movements here, potentially trending along the top of this channel, once we get to 4,000 over here, if the break does happen again, it could go pretty parabolic like this. That is all speculation and to be seen, but these are really the two movements that I'm potentially seeing here. A little bit of a dip over the next few weeks before we test 4,000 in March, or the S&P kind of just trades sideways, breaks through the channel, and then does push over 4,000 within the first couple weeks of March. But also don't ignore the fact that a correction is also very possible to some major support levels, roughly a 65 to 7% dip. And you can see if we actually go back to some of the previous corrections, 10% in September, eight and a half percent in November or October, sorry. So roughly 7% does look feasible here over the next month or maybe in March. Now, I don't think that that's the most likely scenario yet. Again, as I said, I think this is number scenario number one over here, a little curl into 4,000. That is probably the most likely in my opinion. Then scenario number two, where we just break through 4,000. Then scenario number three, where we actually have a correction coming up over the next few weeks. In my opinion, we do have a correction coming up. I just don't know if it's gonna be this soon. No more rambling about the markets. Let's get into the actual portfolio. CBDT, this is one that we picked up at roughly 35 cents or so. We averaged up to 41 cents. I did have nearly 6,000 shares in this position at one time. It was up up to uh, 200% today. 
did end up trimming so i'm actually at 3500 shares now again like i said i always like to actively trim profits especially when positions have run up this much on speculative plays because i don't want to overexpose myself and have the market correct and then these positions just lose all of the unrealized profits and then i'm sitting there twiddling my thumbs hoping that i took profits when i didn't high tide this is one that i trimmed from 6,000 to 4,000 shares when it was trading at about a dollar we were up over or roughly almost 100 percent on this position it was over 100 percent at some point uh, but we're sitting at 77 cents on the position, only up 32% now because cannabis has taken a little bit of a nosedive. But overall, still very confident on high tide, still bullish on cannabis. I think this is a undervalued play. I am going to consider adding to my position if this comes back to my average cost basis here. Again, we, we were in at 40 cents here. 40 cents to 55 cents was a bit of a swing trade. And then I got back in at 58 cents for a longer position hive this is one that i was in and out of also between two and a half to three dollars and three dollars to three thirty cents i was kind of trading this my average position was sitting at about three dollars now it's at 318 with less shares because again i did trim a little bit of profits this is up nearly 87 percent so liking where it is at right now not sure that i'm gonna trim any more of this position because i do want to be exposed to crypto and without actually owning bitcoin or ethereum i think that hive is a good play if you're not in something like riot or mara that has already run up exponentially nuva moan graphites this position was up 600 percent at some point this week if you remember you'll know that i used to have about 12,000 shares of this well we've trimmed it down to 5,000. when i'm up 600 percent on a position i like to take my profits i'm trying to be better at not marrying companies and that is an example of why i decided to cut more than half of my nuvo moan shares i didn't get quite the full run up to two and a half dollars I trimmed before the full explosion happened there. But again, still up 536% on this position here. And should this continue to run up, my price target, for example, for this year of $5, if we're able to hit that around four and a half to five dollars, I'll consider trimming some more of this position. Huh, very good food. This is one that has been very actively managed. We were in at two dollars, out at 10, made like a 400 percent gain, back in at 550, and then sold in the sevens for a 20 to 25 percent gain got back in at 675 they do have earnings coming up very soon if i'm not mistaken the earnings are supposed to be this week so i'm looking for very good food to have a nice run back to ten dollars very very soon fcc this is a new position and if you're in the patreon you're in the discord you'll know when we added this at 37 38 cents you also would have seen the full due diligence that i posted on this company that was posted here in the investment discussion channel on the patreon paid access channels you'll see that i had a pretty big write-up about why i am investing in this company some of the cons some of the pros what is going on with cobalt pricing in the market right now and of course after posting all the due diligence i also posted some of the technicals and where i thought some of the good entry points were so if you want to find out about some of these companies that i post before they go on youtube you can go ahead and check out the patreon link in the description below that is going to get you full access to my daily buys and sells some of the great discussions that we do have in our patron community on discord and of course it's also going to give you access to our weekly member briefing every single sunday before the market opens in addition i will also post right up like this one for some of the companies that I am investing in. Now, as far as the book cost of these investments, 9,900 and the market value, 2,400, there's not a lot of cash sitting here on the Canadian side because on the Canadian side, I am actually usually holding more of these long-term speculative positions that I think have a lot of opportunity to run up. On the flip side, on the American side, that is where I keep most of my cash. That is where most of the volatile market movements are. And that is where I am more actively managed, again, sitting on more cash and trying to take full advantage of the current market movements i do have some positions that i am holding on the american side for example cciv i've got nga as well as a couple other equities if you want to find out more about what i'm doing on the american side of things again the patreon link is going to be in the description below now just taking a look at some of these positions hive has obviously just exploded over the last few trading days and that is in turn of course with the fact that bitcoin has been running 
So if Bitcoin does end up coming down, I do expect Hive to come down. And I am potentially going to look at either setting a flat stop loss somewhere here and then getting back in lower or I'm just gonna look to average into my position on a dip. There's definitely a major level of support here, roughly at the $3.50 level, just above some of this consolidation here. And then you've got a number of support levels over here throughout this consolidation with a major support level, I would say right here at about $2 and a quarter. So $2.25 over here and then $2 over here. If Hive kind of comes down below this consolidation level, then it's gonna look pretty bad. And I only really see that happening if Bitcoin and Ethereum end up taking a major fall however one thing to point out is the relative strength index over here you could see that hive is trading very very much in overbought territory i mean it's not hard to see when the stock has gapped up this much over three trading days so a potential retracement on the rsi to here would look maybe something like this in terms of stock movements we do need to perhaps fill this gap here between 480 and 520 and that is going to be a whole dollar that hive loses on a potential retracement so if you're looking for an entry this could be a decent area but again there's no guarantee that the stock just doesn't continue to run up that is probably going to be more indicative of crypto and ethereum if crypto and ethereum continue to run well then you're going to have hive riot mara all these blockchain stocks uh, just continue to run parabolically. Now, as far as Nouveau Graphite, we did talk about some of these penance breakouts that did occur, again, below a dollar, below $2, and below $3, perhaps another pendant might be forming somewhere here eventually. You know, if, if the stock looks like chops out like this within the next week or two, then potentially there is going to be a breakout to that $3 test. Otherwise, this area that you see here, this is going to probably need to get filled at some point on this retracement. So don't worry if the stock is going from 226 here down to $2. It doesn't mean that the stock is puking up all its gains. It's just a necessary retracement. It's some profit taking. It's the fact that the stock has run up on catalysts with no new catalysts coming up recently. In addition, you have a lot of new investors that piled into the company over here. And when the stock goes down, they're wondering why they're losing money. They don't know that much about the company. So they end up selling more profit taking blah 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 that ends up escalating into this free fall and again two dollars should act as a level of support if we take a bounce here off two dollars back into this area of consolidation then we'll have to reevaluate and see if we're going to go back to the two dollar support level or if we're going to break for three dollars there of course major catalysts are going to play a role when it comes to stock movements but we'll have to reevaluate the technicals in a week, in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, because right now it's a little bit too early to tell what the movements look like. Same story kind of goes for CBDT. This is why I have been trimming profits on some of these companies that have exploded because when they're trading this confidently, right, you have these massive spikes in relative strength. You have these massive run-ups. Well, eventually you have retracements. Now, I'm not saying that a retracement in CBDT is going to happen today tomorrow i'm not even saying it's going to happen next week again if there's continued enthusiasm in this stock if there are continued catalysts this is going to continue to run one thing to keep in mind is how the candlestick is shaping up so you see the wick here dropping from a dollar and 25 cents down to a dollar and 14 cents at the close that is reflective of the fact that the stock was coming down from highs into the close and potentially what you'll see is a continued little bit of a retracement okay so this is just some foreshadowing to what could be happening not necessarily predicting the future here but just a little bit of foreshadowing without catalysts and without continued enthusiasm this might retrace but otherwise i am still very bullish on this company now on the flip side high tide over here is looking really good off this retracement I think there might still be a little bit of room to come down over here. It looks like a potential support level could be forming at around 70 cents Canadian. And if that falls in line with the 20 day moving average, then a potential bounce here off 70 cents would send this flying. In my opinion, again, this is all just speculation. We'll have to see how this plays out. But for me, a potential loading zone for more shares, you know, if I hadn't loaded here at 77 cents, it would definitely be here at 70 cents. One thing to keep in mind when you're loading at support levels is sometimes it is better to wait for confirmation of a bounce. That is what I usually do. So I would look to load up over here. I wouldn't actually load up over here on the dip because what you'll find happening if it breaks through support 
it breaks through support fast and it'll come down hard. So what I would actually look for to add on a dip is right here, right? The continued retracement comes, it bounces off support. And then once we get confirmation, we add here and we play the reversal. Now, one thing that I do like about high tide as far as near term catalysts, well, they've got earnings coming up and those are coming up at the beginning of March. So whether this does end up retracing going into earnings, it is going to be potentially a good time to load up on shares before that earnings pop. But I do think overall the earnings are going to be very good. Their revenues should double considering the fact that they have doubled their stores with their recent acquisitions. Their earnings per share, their guidance and their debt is going to be more indicative of the stock price movements and not so much the revenue in my opinion. And I just want to recap one of our positions as a trade this week. This was EBON. We did mention this in the buys and sells on the Patreon Discord when it was trading at around $7. And we played the run here all the way to $10.50. It's actually all the way at $11.50 in the post market. You can see it's pressing right up against these highs here from back in October. So a potential level of resistance here post market. It'll be interesting to see if this continues to break out tomorrow morning. And again, if you want to get in on this action, take advantage of these 30, 40% trades that we're making on a weekly basis. Go ahead and check out the Patreon link in the Discord below. Another way you could support the channel and support yourself is by signing up for a Webull account. They are a fully commission-free brokerage with fully extended trading hours from 4 a.m to 8 p.m. so you don't have to miss a single opportunity in the market and they are also still offering you free stocks for signing up valued up to $1,600. Those stocks get deposited into your account as soon as you deposit $100. It's basically free money so if you're looking for a new brokerage or you want an additional brokerage to take advantage of the free stocks go ahead and check out the link for Webull in the description below as well. That is going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Five cents was a bit of a swing trade, and then I got back in at 58 cents. That.